A PhD is a huge financial commitment, especially if you're planning to study in another country. However, there are a number of funding sources available for international students in the UK, which can help with managing costs. Hello and welcome to the Find a PhD YouTube channel, where we talk about all things PhD related. And today we're focusing on international PhD funding in the UK. So grab a pen and paper and let's begin. International PhD fees tends to be a lot higher than home fees in the UK. You can expect to pay anywhere between £20,000 to £35,000 a year as an international student. Your fees can be on the lower or the higher end of the spectrum depending on the subject you study. Science subjects tend to be slightly more expensive because of the added equipment and tech that's required. However, the fees is not the only thing to consider when looking at the cost of a PhD. To get a more holistic picture, you must account for bench fees, which is the cost of any specialist equipment, living costs, visa costs and travel costs as well. Some funding sources may help you cover these extra costs. So, what are the funding sources available for international students? Many PhDs in the UK are advertised as specific projects with funding already attached. This just means you will already have a research project and the funding opportunities laid out for you. If you get the research, you get the funding. STEM projects are often advertised this way. However, we've seen more and more arts and humanities projects being advertised as funded projects as well. So who funds these advertised PhD projects? You'll find that these projects are often funded by the UKRI research councils. The United Kingdom Research and Innovation has seven research councils under its wing, each of them specializing in a particular subject area, and they are the UK's biggest PhD funder. You will receive a fee waiver, however, only till the domestic rate, which means the funding will only cover the home fees amount, and you will have to cover the rest of the cost yourself. Although universities tend to waive the rest of these fees or not charge quite as much. However, you will receive around £19,000 a year for living costs and that's paid as a monthly stipend. Applying for an advertised PhD project is fairly simple. You will be applying to your university and the project and if you are successful, you will get the funding automatically. You will still need a research proposal, your previous transcripts, a resume and an English language certificate if you need one. What if none of the research projects are in your area of interest? Can you still hope to be funded by the research councils? The short and simple answer is yes. If you are proposing your own research topic, your funding application will be divided into two steps. Step one would be to get your research accepted by a supervisor and a university with UKRI funding. You'll go through the process of finding a supervisor that's interested in your research, getting them to agree to take you on and applying to the university. Once you've done all of this and if you are accepted, you will be considered for the studentships available at your university. Sometimes you may need to make a second separate application for funding. However, UKRI funding is competitive and the number of studentships available for international students is capped at 30% of the university's total. So what do you do in case you don't get UKRI funding? You look for funding elsewhere. And another port of call is the UK government funding for international students. These are usually merit-based and focused at particular nationalities. One of the most popular UK government scholarships are the Commonwealth scholarships, which are targeted at students from Commonwealth nations. There are three different Commonwealth schemes available depending on where you're from, but all of them cover full tuition fee, a monthly living stipend, return airfare and additional costs which have been approved. There are other scholarships like the Newton PhD scholarships, which are available for students from 18 different countries and cover tuition fee, living costs and visa fees. The Wellcome Trust doctoral studentships in science are more research area focused and offer similar funding but for research related to health. We recommend that you visit their websites for more detailed information. We leave a link down in the description box of the ones we've mentioned above. Sometimes there are scholarships designed for students from specific countries. Our funding guide has a list of some of these country-specific scholarships and we leave a link down in the description box for you to have a look. Country-specific scholarships may be designed as exchange programs to be able to send students from partner countries to the UK. Or they may be initiatives to expand education in particular countries. 
Sometimes these scholarships are set up by governments of these individual countries to help their students receive international opportunities. However, if these scholarships are offered by the governments in your home countries, there may be a clause that your research should benefit your home country and that you have to come back after the completion of your degree. We recommend that you read the terms carefully before you commit to anything. The next two funding options might not be as comprehensive as studentships or scholarships, but it is still worth having a look at them. It is not uncommon for PhD students to combine funding from different sources and every penny counts. UK universities often provide PhD students with scholarships, grants or bursaries. Check your university websites to know what they have on offer. Independent charities and trusts might also support international students. You will have to pitch your research idea and explain to them the impact or benefits of your findings. This is a little overview of how you can fund your PhD as an international student in the UK. You have the option of studentships, government scholarships or funding from universities and charities and trusts. Deadlines will be very different for each of these funding options, so keep an eye out throughout the year. For more funding advice, subscribe to our channel and give us a like if you found this information useful. Thanks and bye for now.